guns up the fire. And the, Christ, the Christians differ whether the fire is eternal or not. Then they differ whether it is a punishment for the physical or only spiritual. Does your body suffer? Or is it only your soul? Furthermore, some of them reject the whole notion of hell. And I've heard this with my own ears from a relative to someone that is close to me. Uh, they said, I really don't believe in this hell. I think it's just, you know, the concept of being distant from God. If you're not close to God, this is hell. But as for the definition of, you know, fire and, you know, a lake of fire as it is believed among Christianity, that particular individual in Christianity born again, they said, I don't agree with that. I have my own personal belief. So really, if you open that door, there's variation. And you really do, know, you do not know what exactly to believe. In Islam, it has been made clear. Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمْ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أُولَئِكَ هُمْ شَرُّ الْبَرِيَةِ Verily, those who disbelieve from among the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, and the polytheists, all the pagans, they will be in the hellfire, abiding there, therein eternally. Those are the worst of the creation. Pay attention. Those are the worst of the creation. Whereas those who believe and do righteous deeds, those are the best of the creation. So the best of the creation are those who believe in Allah and do righteous deeds. The worst of the creation, maybe the worst of the cattle, the animals, or what have you, are those who disbelieve in Allah and reject His Messenger Muhammad وسلم, and reject the Quran and they attribute Allah to Allah deficiency or attribute to Allah children or uh, accuse the messengers of being fornicators and, and, and uh, uh, people, you know, drunkards and who get drunk and what have you or commit incest with their children. Anyone who has this particular lifestyle, this particular understanding, then is this particular verse is speaking directly about those. So really the affair is difficult. فَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَمَنْ فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ As for those whom their scales are high, they will outweigh the bad things, then verily those are the successful. وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَأُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ خَصِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فِي جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدُونَ As for those who their scales will be low, because the bad deeds will exceed their good deeds, or they will have no good deeds, then verily it is those who have lost their souls, in the hellfire abiding there eternally. And this is the destination of each one of us now. Each one of us, whether the speaker or the audience or the future spectators, each one of us is going to be is going to be landing in one of these two places. There's no third. No one will be in, in, the, in the middle, in between. No one will become dust. You know, as the uh, on that day the disbeliever will wish he was just dirt, dust. So he will just be scattered, and he will not have to be held accountable. But this will never be the case. This is only for the animals. The human beings, each one of us will be held accountable either to paradise or to heaven. What is the criteria for entering heaven and being saved from the fire? Believing in God and the six pillars of faith according to the teachings of Islam. Because these are the only ones that are, the only ones that are taught by God, preserved by God. And the only true key to paradise, anything else, is not going to do the job. Lastly, the belief in preordainment, destiny, decree. In Islam, it has been clearly defined. And verily, the command of Allah is a decree predetermined. Nothing happens except by the will of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was teaching Ibn Abbas, he says, know that if all the creation came to benefit you with something that Allah did not have written for you, they will not be able to benefit you unless Allah has it written. And if all of them came to harm you with something that Allah does not have decreed for you, they will not be able to harm you unless Allah had it decreed. Then he said, the pens are lifted and the, the pages are dry, the ink is dry, meaning this is something that should be permanent in the mind. Everything is by the decree of Allah. You come in here, is it by luck? Is it by chance? No. Allah decreed this way before He created the heavens and the earth. Every event that happens now, until the day of judgment was decreed by Allah, yet we were given.
given the free will. We were given the free will because you don't know. You don't know. Do you feel anyone pushing you to go left or right, to move your hand, to put it down? This is something you do independently. Yet Allah knows what you are going to do. So we don't want to have a confusion. Because some people get confused and this misconception must be removed. You have been given the ability to make a distinction between the truth and the falsehood. You've been given two roads. This is the road to heaven. This is the road to hell. And God gave you the ability to travel on this one. And gave you the ability to avoid this one. And he decreed and he knows what you're going to choose. You cannot go this way and blame God for the decree. No. Because you made that choice independently. So in Islam, decree, Qadr is defined. There is no particular definition in Christianity. Actually, Bart Ehrman, which was quoted before, he became an agnostic. I said atheist last time. Let me make a correction. He's an agnostic now. Because of that, why we suffer? He has a book written called Why We Suffer. You know, God's problem. That's what he called it. God's problem. Why we suffer? He has a problem. Why do, why, why do people suffer? This not understanding of the decree of Allah led him to disbelieve in God. After, of course, studying the scriptures. So there's no really definition. Rather, we find that most, mostly it is superstition. Good luck. Lucky seven. Unlucky thirteen. Huh? Sometimes you find a whole building, man, without the 13th floor. And you wonder where the thing is. They really believe that, you know, this is a, a big deal. Don't let it fall on a Friday. Friday the 13th. Oh, big trouble. So they attribute power to the creation of Allah, to numbers, to superstition. And this in Islam does not exist. Nothing will happen to you, not on the 13th. Friday or otherwise, it's all by the will of Allah. You depend on Allah, then you are on good terms. So really, we will find that they have yeah, a number of, of variations and like horoscopes. Huh? You find someone reading the horoscope, what are you, a uh, Capricorn? Okay, today you're going to get 10 halalas, uh, 10 riyas, and mobile has, uh, is going to provide a new offer for its customers and something along these lines. And your uncle is going to die. The person gets stressed and they start crying. They go home and they have a seizure. As if this is revealed by God in the, in the local newspaper. Now what happens is once every 10,000 years it strikes. You know, once they mention something and you know it happens to be right. They say, khalas, this is, the, this is revelation from God. So then the person is weak. Dependence on God becomes weak. And he becomes like a, 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 a scared creature. Afraid of the surroundings. Afraid of luck. Afraid of... Evil, uh, evil and ghosts and spirits and, and what have you and you know uh, karma you know doing good getting good doing bad getting bad and things along these lines and you will live an unstable life whereas the believer he puts his trust in his Lord nothing happens except by the decree of Allah this is very fundamental for a happy life this is why many non-Muslims commit suicide although they have money they got houses they got cars but they reach a point where they don't understand what's going on anymore. Why is this happening to me? You see what I'm saying? They lose hope in life, they kill themselves. Because they do not, they, their, their dependence on God is, is, is almost obsolete. It doesn't exist. It's, it's not there. Their understanding of the objective of life is not there. So in Islam, alhamdulillah, we have the most clear definition of what decree is. And you know that everything happens by the will of Allah, so you don't depend on anyone but Allah. Allah is the one who controls the heavens and the earth, so you ask Allah for goodness and to protect you from evil that He has created. Allah Azawajal had allowed the evil to exist in order for the goodness to become evident. As we said in the beginning, Allah created the truth and the falsehood because through opposites, things become clear. If you have 20 tall brothers such as yourself, mashallah, and one short one, you will not really tell how short he is unless you see him compared to other tall people. If he was standing among people his height, with opposites, things become clear. So whenever there's good and there's the opposite evil, this will be